Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of The Monsters Den. Guess what, everybody? Shark Week is next week, so we decided we're going to do a pre-Shark Week episode here on The Monsters Den, and we're going to wipe everybody else out because we are doing a summertime bad shark film grab bag. So basically how we're doing this is a couple of weeks ago we all took it a long took a look at a long long list of shark films that are out there and i said to everybody pick a film that you have never seen before if you want to go for the worst title the craziest title whatever pick one watch it over the next couple of weeks and then when we do this show we're all going to talk about our experience with our pick and then we're all going to kind of try and decide which one sounds like the worst shark film that was watched by us for this particular episode. So uh, the, the, I see the look on everybody's faces. They're like, oh God, can there be any worse than the one that I saw? I don't know. We'll find out, right? So let me introduce everybody. Of course, we got Jamie Laszlo, Dan Brown, David Gallagher, Chris Allo, and Craig Kaminsky. And uh, we're going to start, we're going to start with Craig. So Craig, which horrific shark film or maybe it was great i don't know did you watch for this episode no spoiler alert it wasn't uh that my my shark movie was from 2012 and it was jersey shore shark attack Ooh. so uh the the movie is and i was and i'll tell you right now i was hoodwinked on this and i'll i'll uh get to that in a, in a second uh, so the the movie has a lot of similarities to the MTV show Jersey Shore uh, that ran, which I, I swore the show was on earlier than this, but it ran from 2009 to 2012. So this movie came out right when- Really? The, right that's, the, is that- That's, that's, that's what I- Yeah, that's wow. what I- that's I would have thought I, that I, was I, way further I back. thought it was much earlier than that myself. Yeah. But, but this movie came out uh, right when the this, this series had ended. It's since been spun off several times, uh, even to this day. Uh, one of the actual Jersey Shore cast members, uh, original ones, is in this movie, uh, Vinny uh, Guadagnino uh, plays a reporter in the movie. And every scene that he's in, he's holding a microphone. And he's not an actor, and it shows. But uh, each of the, the main characters are based on people from the, the Jersey Shore TV show. And so if you have a tangential uh, remembrance of the show, which sadly I do, uh, I, you were, I'm eight, I, because I've watched at least one or two seasons of this with, uh, with the missus, mm -hmm. uh, that you, some of these things, it's like, oh yeah, that guy. So here, uh, the real person, the the situation. If we remember him, he his character, and this is the complication, or TC, as he goes by. His father yeah. is a uh, is the sheriff of the of the town, and and this takes place is supposed to take place in Seaside Heights, New Jersey, which is where the show uh, for the first for the beginning of the seasons. Uh, did take place. His father is the sheriff, played by Jack Scalia. I don't remember what else he's been on. He's he's a he's a character actor mostly. I've seen maybe some soap operas and things like that. But the famed character Snooky, her characters, the person playing her, yes, is Nooky. Uh, Ron, Ronnie, the uh, the the big the big bulky guy from the TV show, the guy who says, "Come at me, bro." Is played by a guy named Donnie. The first, the first scene that you see of Donnie, he has one of those hard hats on that you uh, put can, that you can put beer cans, you know, on the side. They're protein shakes on the sides of his hard hat. With the straw. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, uh, DJ DJ Paulie D, his character's name is Paulie Balzac. And they even make fun of him right in the beginning and say, you're not a real Italian. You're not even a real Italian. And he says uh, he respects the Guido lifestyle. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, there's there's two other girls in this. I don't know if they're based on the actual characters 
uh, from the show. I mean, uh, one is J Moni. I don't know if she's supposed to be J Wow from the from the show. Another one is B J. I have no idea. So it's uh, well, Tony Sirico is also in the movie. Uh, played Paulie from uh, The Sopranos, and he is criminally wasted in in this in this movie. I mean, although he does get probably the longest soliloquy he's ever had as a, as a working actor, as he has a quint like story recant to the fellas uh, of the prior Jersey shore shark attack that happened in uh, some, when he was young uh, and a couple other well-known actors in it. William Atherton is totally slumming it in this movie. He plays the evil developer uh, I mean, he's he's just he's terrible in this. He's only in a handful of scenes. Paul Sorvino uh, plays the mayor of Seaside wow, Heights. Oh, they got he's, names. He's, 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 I'm he's, jealous. He's, you got actors in yours. He's, he's, he's in about he's in about two scenes, and his character is pretty much the Murray Hamilton of the movie. Even at one point, he says, "You want me to close the beaches on the Fourth of July?" Uh, but uh, he, well, bottom line, the plot is a. Uh, William Atherton is an evil developer. Uh, they're doing some offshore uh, drilling to put in some cond. I don't even know what this has to do with the ocean. They're doing some offshore drilling, uh, which ruptures something in the on the ocean floor, and albino white finned sharks emerge. The sharks are CGI, of course, and they are terrible looking. They are all white with red eyes, and they look like. They are like Atari 2600 level, very bad. Anytime there's blood, you can tell it's sort of like in the water. It's sort of uh, done in post-production. It's not even like re liquid blood in, in the ocean water. It's pretty terrible. But the most egregious thing of this movie happened about 12 minutes into it, as I was led to believe, according to Tubi, that this was an R-rated movie. It says R on there, so I was at least prepared for that. And much to my utter, utter disappointment, 12 minutes into the movie, there is a wet t-shirt contest. That sound, that would be, I was, okay, all right. The girls are wearing bikini tops with white tank tops over top of them. Uh, needless to say, I was shocked and appalled <laughs> of not seeing one titty. As is Alan Rosenberg right about now. Yes, I, I did not see... I, I I did not see one titty nor hear one f bomb in this entire movie, and it said it was rated R. So I am I am deeply offended yeah. uh, by that. Jesus. Deeply. I mean, it's like if you know Chris Chris hands me, hey, here's a here's a great porno that it's uh, you know it says triple X on there. I'm expecting no holes barred, and that's what and I and it did not deliver. So I, that I was upset about. However, what, uh, the best actor in this movie, bar none, is Joey Fatone. Yes, that Joey Fatone from NSYNC. He's in the movie for about five minutes or so. He sh and he has a couple of funny lines. He has like some natural charisma, probably you know, from all of his years of performing. And I believe he he hosted a game show or or is uh, uh, doing that at this point. But he had a couple of funny lines in his in his brief moments in the in the movie he says he says to his manager you know i i told you to book me at the jersey shore not you know i meant atlantic city not seaside heights justin wouldn't have to deal with this so he had a couple <laughs> he had a couple of funny lines in it and it's the funny. best part though is right when he's about ready to sing a song in front of a crowd a shark jumps up kills him and the all the ladies in the front row are sprayed with joey fatone blood Later on, they catch, uh, just like in, just like in Jamie's shirt, Jaws, they catch an albino shark and somebody says, why don't you cut that fish open and see if Joey Fatone comes out? And a guy sticks his hand up in there and pulls out Joey Fatone's microphone. So... Of course. A couple parts that are not bad then. Yeah, they, they, they try to kill the sharks with fireworks at one point, Roman candles and uh, and such, they ask they go to chum the water. Donnie throws in protein bars and says the sharks cannot resist 25 grams of peanut butter protein. I'm not kidding when I say that. <laughs> and 
at the end of the movie, they do kill some of the sharks somehow with automatic weapons on a boat. I, I don't remember how they, they got the the automatic weapons. I was starting to drink a lot by this point, hoping at some point that some nudity would be in this movie or something, but alas, there was none. So two thumbs down for uh, Jersey Shore Shark Attack. Uh, although I would recommend it for, you can at least watch the first few minutes of it. So you can, if you, if you're familiar with the Jersey Shore TV show to get a laugh out of some of the characters, uh, hamming it up as the, the, the fake counterparts to their, to the real characters, but as a shark movie, I cannot recommend it and shame on you to be for writing rated R on this movie. Ted, you what, what was it just an R rating? Was it? It okay. said it said rated R, so I mean I was you you know, some of the other movies that I know are so made for sci-fi movies. Uh, they'll say TV fourteen on them, uh, but this one uh, and I this was a, a made for sci-fi movie. But I thought that maybe they had altered an a, you know, a, an uncut version of it. No f bombs as they do. No, they did not. So probably just a typo or something. I don't know. Yeah, that, that doesn't sound very good. Who would have thought that Jersey Shore Shark would be an absolute terrible man there? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, we're going to see the highlights of Paul Trevino and Tony Sirico. It's like, what are you guys doing for a paycheck? You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Tony Sirico is tailor made for throwing F bombs. I mean, if, if you've watched yeah. The Sopranos, he does it all the time and with so much flair. And in this movie, I mean, he even says, yeah, he even says like butts instead of ass or boot. Yeah, I mean it's really it's really bad to to see him to see him like this. I want to remember Tony Sirico throwing out the f bombs and ethnic slurs like he did on The Sopranos, but that was not to be for Jersey Shore Shark Attack. Castrated him. All righty. Um, All right, Davey. What was your shark? The classic. Quite, quite upset to hear a William Atherton movie was no good. That's just after I made a, a little video about William Atherton as well. I love William Atherton. Um, I decided to go for, I wanted to go for something before this kind of crap that Craig was talking about there. Before Sharknado, um, BS, before Sharknado, turned it all into a big comedy, let's make a bad film on purpose, bullshit extravaganza. So I knew I wanted to go to the BS times. Um, and there wasn't actually as many sharp movies as I thought, um, if you look down the list. And the most famous ones you've all seen. So I, was, I wasn't dealing with that many. Um, lots of Jaws ripoffs, but they tended to be with other animals rather than the shark, because obviously the shark was the most problematic thing about the making of Jaws. Um, but I did find uh, Night of the Sharks, starring uh, Treat Williams and Antonio Fargus um, from 1988. Uh, still waters run deep, dark, and dirty. Um, it's a pile of shit. <laughs> Can all you need really? No, it's um, this is this is um a rip off just like Craig's in a totally different way. Um, this is a film where it's I mean it's Italian. Um, they've hired two name actors, Treat Williams, who was just on the way up. Um, and Antonio Fargas, who was uh, obviously Huggy Bear, wasn't he? More like Cocaine Bear in this movie. Yeah. He's fucking out of it, man. Um, he's on the way down, um, and their careers kind of intersect for a hot minute here. And I'm glad Truett Williams died this year because I wouldn't want to make stumble across this video and see this. Ugh, uh, because this is just this is an embarrassment. Um, what what? I don't know what kind of debts he racked up to do this. This was right at the peak of his career, like always oh, going to be the next big thing, and then he did this. So basically, his brother is um, a computer hacker who's got a recording of a, a CD recording of the president doing some kind of deal with the mob, and he's blackmailing the mob into a diamond deal. Says he'll reveal everything, and he's he's got the government against the wall. And what's any of this got to do with sharks? Um, well, Treat Williams lives on the beach down in uh, Barbados um, with his friend. Antonio Fargus, um, and they just hang about in the beach all day, like a couple of beach bums, um, and that's his brother, um, who's the hacker. He comes, he sends, the brother comes down with the CD and blah, blah, blah. There's a plane crash, 
and says, uh, oh, I, I, I need you to look after the D and you, you, the government are going to be coming after me and the mob are going to be coming after me. And I, but an hour into it, I'm sitting going, where's the fucking shark? What the <laughs> f- Have I put in the wrong disc? Mm-hmm. What the fuck is going on here? It's a really, do you know what it's like? It's like, um, have you ever seen that really bad B movie, White Diamond with Robert Ginty? That's the kind of level we're at here, a really bad B movie. Um, Robert Ginty comparisons tell you you're in bad territory. Um, so it's just really generic. Um, hey, I'm going to do a crime, then I'm going to blackmail the guy, blah, blah, blah. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Diamonds, I've got diamonds. Who's got diamonds? I've got diamonds. Have you got the recording? I've got the recording. He's got the recording. She's got the recording. Who's got the recording now? All that kind of nonsense. Back and forth, back and forth. No fucking shark. Um, and then about an hour into the film, Treat Williams gets a little bit drunk and starts shouting at the sea, going, you bastard! You're still out there, you bastard! And you find that he's, he's shouting at a shark called Cyclops that hangs about the sea. Just hangs about this little marina they've got. Like. And um, Treat Williams, um, his brother, uh, who brings the trouble down, dies, and Treat Williams has to avenge his brother, and he decides, well, I'm a pacifist, so I can't use guns. So I will get revenge, and I'm not making this up. I will get revenge by shark, and he just convinces the mobsters and the government officials in various ways to chase him out to sea, and then just pushes them overboard and they get eaten by a shark. That's, that's it. That's how they tie in the shark. And th- this wow. is how Night of the Sharks... Yeah. So Night of the Sharks, it's more like five minutes of the sharks is, is really what it should be called. It is, it is horrendously bad. Um, this is a... This is a there's, there, I'm not joking when I say that there are more sharks in License to Kill, the Bond movie, than there are in this. You know, Felix Leiter gets his leg cut off and uh, eaten by a shark. Um, there's a whole scene with the the wife and license to kill and sharks. Um, there's more sharks than license to kill. It's not an exaggeration. This has a little bit of stock footage of a shark, one rubber shark, a completely different shark. One's a hammerhead and one's a tiger shark. Um, and that's it. Um, so as a shark movie, it's a zero out of ten. As a crime movie, it's a zero out of ten. As a Treat Williams movie, it's a zero out of ten. There's no redeeming features to this. There's absolutely nothing. Um. And it came out, it came and somehow out. Davey has the DVD in his hand. You decide to buy it? Your homework well, assignment? I, I, well, or at least I'm, in Europe, was it? It's got yeah, a question. Well, 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 I was going to say that that was released theatrically in America, but yeah. uh, um, 1988 but, sounds like uh, late. I mean, because I have the one well, sheet and I could have sworn it was earlier than that. 19, no, 1988, right? And ah, okay. that's the same year as. Um, uh, Dead Heat, was that what it's called? With Treat Williams and... Um, yeah. 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 So, you know, we're talking about, you know, peak Treat Williams isn't exactly, you know, a massive thing, but it, for him, that was a peak. Um, so this should be relatively good, I think. It should be a, there or thereabouts. No, this feels like a really bad uh, holiday film that, that was made for a tax write-off or something. There's no redeeming features... Um, I mean, the interactive menu and the scene index with the special features, that kind of tells you all you need to know. Um, it's it's complete nonsense, and I can't recommend anything about it. No, no, excuse me, unlike Craig. Was there nudity? Uh, thank you. There are, <laughs> there are tips in it for maybe 10 seconds. Um, they 10 are seconds over, more than Craig got. They, exactly. are, they are overcast tips because they're sunbathing on a very cloudy day, poor actresses. Um, so this this is not Rosenberg approved. I'm sorry, um, <laughs> but it's it's regardless. There are ten seconds that people might like in this, um, but no, it's it's an embarrassment. It's directed by um, Tonino Ricci, um, and also stars um, what's his name? Uh, Charles? No, Christopher Connolly, who was the old guy in Peyton Place. So you know, it's it's full of stars. Um, Antonio Fargas basically plays. Um, what do you call him's character from Jaws 4? Oh, Mario Van Peebles, uh, Mario Van Peebles. um, Sonny, but, wasn't his name Sonny? Yeah, uh, Whippy Goldberg, yeah, that's what he looks like. Anyway. But, um, so <laughs> he, he basically plays that, he plays exactly the same role. And at one point, um, they have a grief dance just like in Jaws 4, and they go for a little dance after he finds out his brother's dead. So, this might be the only film ever 
that tries to not just pay homage to Jaws, but specifically Jaws 4, and I think that probably tells you something. Maybe Mario Van Peebles. Yeah, you know, because that film did so well, they thought they should, they should try and piggy bank on the success. It's success. only a year after Jaws 4. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, Maybe it killed that. vacation out of it like Michael Caine. I, I'm, I'm 99% sure that's what this is, because it's, like, filmed in the Cayman Islands or something. If that doesn't trigger, like, Oh, somebody's trying to money launder here, then I don't know what does. <laughs> um, and Cheap Williams isn't even alive for us to ask anymore, so only Antonio Fargas knows. So once they do a super deluxe 4K edition, maybe he'll come out with the, the truth and we'll find out why this was actually made. Um, so this is abysmal, don't ever watch it. It's a waste of time. It's not a good, bad movie. It's not a bad, good movie. It's just horrendous shit. Gotcha. All right, then. We are two for two. Mr. Allo. Okay. Um, Cinematic delights that do you want to be watching here? Uh, my movie was a movie I avoided for years, and I'll I'll try and give the backstory as quick as possible. Uh, my movie was 2016's Sharkensaw Women's Prison Massacre. Um, on paper, to me, this is an amazing film, or at least so I thought years back. Uh, because it stars uh, Tracy Lords, who I am a huge fan of. Um, Cindy Lucas, who was Gorgeous George in WCW. She was Randy mm-hmm. Macho Man Savage's girlfriend. And then she, she left him for Doyle from the Misfits. She was in the band Gorgeous Frankenstein. Um, I met her once on the Danzig tour bus while she was uh, watching herself masturbate on uh, TV on the tour bus. Um, and it was this was directed by Jim Wynorski, who is a fucking legend in trash cinema. I mean, he's directed movies like Lost Empire, the Not of This Earth remake with Tracy Lords, fucking Chopping Mall, Chopping Mall. Mm-hmm. Death Stalker 2. I mean, just an unbelievable first. Uh, yeah, just unbelievable f- f- filmography. Anyway, long story short, yeah, met Tracy a bunch, met Cindy a bunch, and um, I had talked to Jim Wynorski a couple times on Facebook. And then he went to a awesome convention, which I've been a couple times in Cleveland called Cinema Wasteland. Mm-hmm. I got an original US one sheet for the, his remake of Not of This Earth, which stars Tracy Lords. Did not get a huge theatrical release. Posters are very rare. I bring him the poster. He, as I'm talking to him and he remembers me from Facebook, He's like, oh, yeah, he goes, you know, I just did another movie with Tracy called Shark and Saw Women's Prison Massacre. I'm like, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it, blah, blah, blah. He's a super cool guy. He goes to sign my poster and, and at the bottom he signs this, he signs his name, but then he signs a big note and he's like, hey, Tracy, it's Jim, sign here. And he like makes a fucking line. I'm like, oh, my God, I wanted to fucking kill him. I'm like, dude, this is like a fucking rare poster. This is not. Anyway, I, I, I had to pay him the 20 bucks. I take the poster. I'm like, Jim, I run my own retro horror film festival. I would love to show Chopping Mall, blah, blah, blah. Yes, Chris, you got my info? Let's talk after the festival. Great. I message him after the festival, totally forgetting that he fucking ruined my poster, you know, because I had told him I was going to bring it to another convention to meet Tracy again. And anyway, um, I'm like talking to him about Chopping Mall. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you can you can run Chopping Mall. I'm like, great, you, you have a 35 millimeter film print of it? He goes, yeah, well, I have it, you know, but he's like, it's really heavy. He goes, those 35 millimeter prints are such a bear. I'm like, yeah, I, I know that, but I have FedEx, so we'll just ship it back and forth. And he's like, you know what? I have this new scan of Chopping Mall on Blu-ray. And he's like, how about we do the Blu-ray? And he's like, I'll throw in Sh- uh, Shark and Saw Women's Prison Massacre as a double feature. You pay me for one fee and you could show both. And I'm like, no, no. Our thing is we only show 35 millimeter film prints. And he just kept saying, oh, but it's so heavy. I could barely move it. I- I- I'm like, he's like, I have it in a storage. Like, He's like, but take the Blu-ray. And I'll give you the other movie. Anyway, I just, I finally dropped it. And I was so pissed off between him ruining my poster and dicking around with um, 
the fucking film print, uh, I never, I never, I never purposely watched Sharkansaw Women's Prison Massacre until last week. And holy shit, I did it for Pete. I shouldn't have done it for Pete. It was fucking awful. Holy fuck. I mean, listen, first off, I hate CGI shark movies. They're fucking useless. Um, but this is this is beyond terrible. Uh, it, it's basically, it's not even a fucking shark movie. It's basically a knockoff of Tremors. Um, so long story short, there's some frackers who unle- accidentally unleash a spiked shark in the swamp who then um, starts swimming In the dirt, the shark has spikes on it, except every time we see it in the dirt, I don't think they have the spikes. So it might've been two different animators, but like Craig, I did have a couple drinks in me, so I'm not sure. Um, There's no prison to speak of. There's like six really hot girls that are on a work detail who then break free from the prison guards and they get held up at a house while these um, these dirt sharks or sand sharks literally burrow through the sh- through the fucking dirt outside and it'll occasionally jump out and attack them. So basically just Jim Wynorski ripped off Night of the Living Dead and Tremors, but like really shitty, like not even in the fucking realm of being like the worst versions of either of those ever. I mean, you never see the prison. There's these, all these beautiful girls, as Craig said. Sorry, Alan Rosenberg. There is no fucking nudity. You don't even get a hard nipple in this fucking movie. There's hardly any violence or gore. I mean, to me, Jim Wynorski commits the biggest sin in that this movie is boring as fuck. Tracy Lords pops in and out of the whole movie. She's with this, like, she's a cop. And she's with this other cop and they're on, on in, a, in a cop car and you could have totally taken her out. Like it's completely obvious that she shot the film, you know, Jim shot her on her own and just spliced it in. You know, there's a, there's a Tracy scene like every eight minutes. Yeah, well, we need to sell this movie. So let's put some of the people know in there for huh. 10 minutes. We'll come up with the storyline later. Just shoot some <laughs> stuff for her doing anything. That's it. She has no interaction with any of the cast. By the time she gets to the house, the sharks are already dead. I mean, it's fucking garbage. I've seen a lot of shark movies. Um, but yeah, this, I'm going to have to say this is probably the worst I've, I've ever seen. I, you know, on a, on a, on a Jamie Laszlo scale of, of, of of one to five fins, I didn't have any fins with me though. I'm giving it zero fins. It's fucking terrible. It's going well so far, isn't it? This wonderful celebration of Shark Week. Did it at least take place in Arkansas? Yeah, that's it. That's the only thing they got right, Greg. It was it was it was in Arkansas. Non-Union State, they could work there. No, I, I just I could, and then I'm like, well, wait a second. Like this happened to me once before. Like where I watched a movie and I was like, well, there was no nudity. But no, no, I looked it up to be there. There's only one version. And and the version that fucking Jim Wynorski made has no nudity and hardly any violence. Um, and, the, you know, the little bit of violence that there was, it's a shitty CGI blood, like like Craig was saying. And it, it's it looks so fucking terrible. There was one <laughs> shot that almost looked like a rubber shark. And maybe it was. And it was early on in the movie. And then but that was ab- abandoned. Um, you know, for obviously for CGI sharks in the in the fucking in the mud. Jesus. All right, man. Yeah. I mean, I hope it picks up from here. And then I, and then I remembered what Jamie's got coming up. Oh, Christ. Let me pick some doozy. Speaking of Jamie, all right, what do you got? Oh. Hey. All right. Well, let me stand up because I got a lot to get to here. Picked an hour and 10 minute movie, uh, which was good. It's called Shark Exorcist. It's one of the bad ones post Sharknado. Now, Sharknado is the only movie like this I've ever seen in the past. All right. I've never seen any of the sequels. I've never seen any of these crazy Shark of the Corn movies whatsoever. So I wanted to pick the craziest one that I could see. I mean, they had uh, Sharkula, like Dracula, all kinds of different ones. I went with the Shark Exorcist. Um this, I'm going to say movie in quotes because this is barely a fucking 
movie. All right. I'm thinking of not even putting it in my movie diary because I, I mean, this is like a film project. (laughs) This is a film project by a bunch of 19 year olds. And if I was the teacher and they brought it to me, I give them a fucking D even as a film project. Maybe if I was drinking while I was filming or as I was grading a C minus maybe. So all right, an evil nun. Uh, her name is Linda Blair, the character. Ha 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 ha. So sly, so whatever. Uh, summons the devil. Oh, Hollywood. We don't possess like a shark. All right. Now I'm thinking, if you want to do something, have a boat, have a captain, and have it be Captain Howdy. There's a little bit more slyness to it instead of Linda Blair being the nun. Ha ha ha. But right away, it looks like an amateur film. There's a three hundred thousand dollar budget on this. And I think most of it went to catering. The, the actors have no direction whatsoever in this film. And it's directed by this guy, Donald Farmer. He's been doing shorts in the 70s. And he's been doing movies since the 80s. You think he would learn something along the way. But he does not. These actors don't know what to do with their hands. They don't know where to look. They they read the line. They say the lines like they're like they're reading them off the script for the very first time. They, everything these actors do is awkward. Everything. It's as, it's as if aliens came from another planet and tried super scrolls. It's like scrolls came from another planet, tried to blend in. They really don't know what humans do, but they're trying to do. What humans, humans do this, right? So do that. You have a jogger. He can't even act natural when he's jogging. All you have to do is jog. No, this guy goes. (laughs) (laughs) Because that's what you do when you're hot, right? You go like that. They got a couple at a carnival and a couple in the water. The couple in the carnival, they're poking each other. And they're laughing and they're pointing and they're laughing because that's what humans do when they're couples. And the couple in the water, they're cupping water up with their hands and pouring it on one another and laughing because that's what couples do in the water, right? They have no direction whatsoever. Um, And then when they speak, half the time, the wind disrupts the audio. You can't hear what they're saying in the wind. And then when they talk, it's like, and I'll tell you another thing. That, yeah, but, and you shouldn't go in the water. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. In, in fact, when the, the girl possessed towards the end is being uh, exercised by the priest, she tells the priest the whole plan. You can't hear a fucking word because of the wind. You don't know what the plan is. <laughs> Cannot hear it. So the shark. The shark actually looks like the one shark in Jaws. It does. Not this shark, though. Oh, you thought I meant this shark? No. <laughs> Do you remember the game Shark Killer from the mid-70s, the old arcade game where you shot the shark? No, you know the kid in Jaws playing that game and they show the, the shark looks like that shark in Jaws. That's the shark it looks like. It has the same 17 moves to it. When it moves, it's always doing the same thing. It's always surrounded by just blueness in a couple bubbles. And that's it. It's like they were going to add something to it later and just never did. And that's another thing about the possessions in this movie. (laughs) They all talk like this. And it's as if the director said, don't worry. You just talk like a demon and then we're going to enhance it later in post-production and give you a voice and they don't do it. And then the actors say, I I thought you were going to make this better. Nope. That's it. (laughs) So, and then when people are attacked, they're in water waist high, right? Here comes the shark, all blue around him. So this shark is in deep, deep water. He opens his mouth, and the person waist high <laughs> just starts okay. getting eaten, yeah. I guess. But this, the scenes, oh, my God. There's a lot to get to, guys. I'm sorry. If I sat through it, you're going to have to sit through me talking about it. There's a scene where a couple sorority sisters are ankle high in the water, and the sorority sister is on the pier going, you go in the shark-infested water if you want to be part of our sorority. And then they look at her, and then there's a flash. That's all it is on the screen, a flash. And that's all you see. And the girls in in the water ankle high are are screaming. 
I think the girl on the pier got eaten. I don't know. The flash is supposed to be that. No idea. There's a scene where, where uh, the exorcism is going on towards the end. The priest is trying to exercise this chick, I guess. All of a sudden, the sky opens and the shark comes out of the sky. Just it just comes out of the sky. And you don't see it eat everybody, but I think it eats everybody because you never see these characters again, I guess. I, I don't know why it came out of the sky. Um, is there any nudity? Just is there any nudity? <laughs> I, 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 no, dude. No. Oh. no. Oh, bathing oh, suits. Tell them what there isn't. Dan Brown. Oh, we picked the wrong you film. You get, you get, no, you get, you get, I, I've noticed on the larger budgets on these films, you'll get hotter women in bikinis. They can't act. These but women down to lower echelon. Some of them aren't even hot because when the shark comes out of the sky and eats everybody, we go. That's Act One, I guess, because <laughs> all of a sudden we go to a chick driving in a car and she's why. going to go sunbathe. All right, who's this chick? Don't know. And she's sunbathing in the mud by a lake, and she's lying there, and she's rough looking. That's another thing. There's no professional makeup in this movie. She's very rough looking and she's got scabs on her knees. All of a sudden, this creepazoid comes out of the bushes. <laughs> I don't know who these people are in the movie now. And you see through his point of view, he starts taking pictures right over her body as she's sleeping, I guess. And the scene goes on forever. This creepazoid, you see through his eyes, taking pictures of her. And then as that scene goes on forever and finally ends, you watch him look at the pictures of her through his eyes on his phone as he swipes right. He slowly swipes right of every picture he took. 17 pictures! I <laughs> counted 17 times he does this. It's almost and like they're all the same picture to pretty much. To get to motion picture length. And then he goes away and, and that, that meant nothing. That meant nothing in the movie. And then all of a sudden the girl wakes up. Linda Blair the nun comes and attacks the chick who was sleeping kills her. Then a woman comes out of the water, kills the nun. All the while, there's boulders behind them, just hanging out with, with like a tube thing tied to the back. These boulders have no idea movies even being made or that they're in a movie. There is no doubt in my mind that they have no idea a movie is being made on the shore behind them. So it's over, right? The credits come on. No. This is like a Marvel movie. Now we got a fucking after credit scene. So we see this chick is the that we never seen before in the movie. This young chick, she's in the aquarium. And it's all done silently because they just all you hear is a score. And she's looking at fish. Look at the fish. And there's creepy music playing. And then she goes into the gift shop. And there's all these stuffed sharks. Every goddamn stuffed shark is the fucking same. But she keeps pulling them out, putting that one back. Oh, this one is the good one. It's the same fucking shark as the one you just put down, honey. And she just keeps pulling them out. And then she goes out in the hallway where there's people walking around. Again, have no idea of fucking movies being filmed as they walk by this woman. She pulls out a rubber shark, this young girl, and starts acting like it's a dildo, rubbing it around her neck. And then she goes back into the aquarium, looks at the fish. We see the back of her head. She turns around. She spits out orange goo. Now the movie is finally fucking over. If that's what you want to call it, a movie. So um, Shark ghetto, Exorcist is... The ghetto is how old, Jamie? Huh? The ghetto is how old? The, with the shark dildo? Yeah, at the end. She's maybe 15. She's pretty fucking young. Yeah, I don't know. My I, as older I get, everybody looks 15. So she might have been 19, 18, but she's pretty fucking young to be doing the dildo dance with the shark. Somebody will write a song about it. <laughs> really creepy, that movie. Like, yeah, I mean, that was something. All crammed into an hour and 10 minutes. And when it was over and the credits came on, I'm like, I thought there's 10 minutes left to this. Oh, here it comes. I don't know. I think Jamie's selling me. Chris, I know you, Chris, I know you do this. Really intrigued. You know what? It's something. I started to see. watching that film. This is, I started started watching. To see. No, 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 this is the worst example of Jamie's right. This guy doesn't know how to make a film. Oh, it's he, so lazy. 
a total pair. I, 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 yet I am oddly have the same. enthralled. This, he, no, this he guy has waited for those boaters to go away, but no, let's get it done. Let's just get it done. I gotta eat supper. Let's go. Middle age. I want to see this scabby kneed woman. Yeah, I, I, and I was gonna say, in, in full disclosure, I'm Facebook friends somehow with Donald Farmer. I mean, Don, I'm Facebook Don, friends with Don a lot Farmer of people. Donald Farmer is older than I am, and that's fucking old. And I was gonna say, he posts like, like <laughs> I'm sure Dan, and I'm sure seeing them like yeah. all these different versions of Shark Exorcist oh, yeah. on DVD and Blu-ray and all these foreign oh, markets. And hey, this thing. just got reissued. And not, not, not wow. to, not, to, not to be a spoiler here. But during this massive amount of research I did on this fucking week, uh, they are making a shark exorcist too. Oh, all right. So you know, but the thing is, is you know, is Farmer got, making it? I don't know. I, I haven't gotten that far into the IMDb page yet, but I'll figure I'm sure out. Some covered this. I'm sure we said post credit oh, scene was a teaser. Oh, um, I didn't even talk about the part where the one girl jumps into the water and becomes a shark, or she well, got sacrificed that, and the shark again. jumps out of the water where the girl was and kills the other. Jamie's girl. totally selling me. Oh, no, I what, don't know what's, what's happening, though. I don't the, know what's happening. I don't think oh, Tom Farmer no. knows what's happening. I don't think the actresses know what's going on. He had a $300,000 budget. He took $100,000 for himself. I wouldn't have to know what the fuck I'm doing either if you give me $100,000. You know, that's what it's all about. You know, the actors don't get money. You want to be in a movie? Sure, go ahead. It's, it's not the kind of movie where um you'd think, oh, well, maybe there's some titillation or there's good, bad. These these women are just rolling in not just dirt like a mud fight or something. They're just rolling in actual dirt that you'd see in a, a dirty park full of syringes and things. It is everything is the most disgusting version of what it possibly could be, and it's only famous because Red Letter Media did a a video on it about five years ago, um, and it's caught on a bit of internet notoriety because of that. It's not good bad. It's just depressing at how filthy and embarrassing. I felt embarrassed for some of these actresses as they're acting like they're possessed i felt in bed it was hard to watch yeah yeah you know, it's funny like in hearing all these movies so far we're not even done yet we're hardly talking about sharks at all <laughs> and there's the sharks are not even part yeah right exactly <laughs> that's how they said so was mentioned unless this shark is the film. sharks of the corn i actually tried to sit through that that's even worse than all these. That's not even my pick. There's not even a fucking shark. There's some guy that wears like a shark. He massacres women. He thinks he's a shark. He's in, he sits and growls in front of his mirror. What the fuck? And he goes in the cornfield. Yeah, it's bizarre. No, this is like, you know, this is... I'm glad that's, this this is this is giving me a mental enema about film. This whole thing. This whole, that, that's what again, I am oddly intrigued now by a man dressed up as who thinks he's a shark in a corner. <laughs> you think that, Craig? Yeah, but... I'm picturing the shark from Saturday, the other old Saturday Night Live. Candy Graham. Candy Graham. Right. <laughs> no, 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 Craig. I saw a movie. I can't find. It. I've just watched so many of these shitty shark movies. I think I may have dreamt this because I was watching something. It was in Finland. They're speaking like phonetic English, right? And it's called Attack of the Shark. And like, there's a guy walking in a marsh, and they're speaking like with a with, with an accent. And there's like a shark, not even a shark. It's a fucking guy with a shark head, and he's got like a a shark tie back suit. And a pair of like fisherman's boots. And that's the shark he finds. And he gets on his phone and goes, I think I found some kind of dead creature on the beach. It's like, get the fuck out of there. What are you expecting to do here? Right. And the, but the guy has the boots. It's like, what? Well, they have to put on the actor so he didn't get his feet wet in the marsh? Insane. And I, I went back to try to find it to say, and I couldn't find it. So I may have dreamt that. So that's that's for the record. Uh, I'm, I'm determined to find this fucking film. Hands off his meds again. Yeah, that's it. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, oh man, Dan's been watching too many shark films now. He's oh, no, this is this is this is this was a trip down. The well, road. he went in all in on Twilight, so why not? Well, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. after watching this, Twilight is like fucking Orson Welles. I was about to say, yeah. it turns out, it turns out that Craig was watching oh. fucking Jersey Shore at the same time he was watching Twilight, so we can let <laughs> you know, that. so Dan, how about your real pick for today? Well, the real pick, actually, I wanted to get off topic. So I decided to pick the James Wood show called Shark. No, not really. Oh, that's for the show that's going to be for disgruntled uh, older actors that are off the fucking rails. Uh, so uh, anyhow, no, I my pick 
is I'll have to preface this. I, I, back in the 80s, I remember being invited to a private screening uh, with Toshiro Mifuni to watch like Yojimbo. And it was him and about 30 people in the audience and a Q&A and an autograph session, the whole thing. And here it is, you cut to 35 years later, and I'm deciding whether I like Sharks of the Corn or fucking Sharkenstein. What, where, how far have I fallen here? You know? So, but that being said, okay, I, I really went down the rabbit hole with this. And I think there is an underbelly of bad horror films. It's like your Nicolas Cage in eight millimeter, and you're trying to find the pornographic guy, and you go to one place. Oh, you got to go into the basement. Then you got to go to the back room. And then you're talking to a guy that looks like El Duce, the fucking punk singer out of LA. And, you know, just crazy, dark, deep, deep web shit. And that's what these shark movies are like. So, anyhow, that being said, after my research, I've decided to do a film called Shark Killer. Oh, yeah. Shark Killer, great looking poster. I said earlier before we went on board. Whoever this wild eye releasing releases all these bad movies, whether it be a film called like Catnado or C Cocaine Crabs from Outer Space and so forth, they make incredible one sheet posters that are right up there, you know, and the marketing department. Then once you turn that video on, you are so appalled. It's like uh, the <laughs> portrait of Kramer and Seinfeld. He is such a repulsive brute, yet I cannot look away <laughs> type of thing. <laughs> and I said, so anyhow, Shark, so Sharkula, and this is directed by a guy named Mark Polonia, who has done more for the shark industry than Jacques Cousteau, Steven Spielberg, even Robert Shaw, for that matter. OK, he has directed 11 of these fucking movies, Sharkula being one. He has been making movies since the 90s with his brother. Now, unlike the Chiodo brothers, who were great special effects artists and made killer clowns from outer space and can milk that to the end of time, okay, him and his brother, uh, they did 85 movies together in 30 years. Now, his brother passed away in 2008, but all these movies are off the fucking rail. So now we'll get to Sharkula. Sharkula opens up, okay, with Dracula being chased across a field. The budget is so low that they have like some kind of like cobwebby uh, Photoshop thing to show it's nighttime. It's filmed in the day. And he's running across. Not only is he that, he's heavy set. He has red hair. Okay. The mob chases him. They hit him in the chest with a, uh, with a sword. He falls into the ocean. Just so happens there's a shark swimming by. There is an actual shark. CGI shark. Yes. Bad rubber mask when it attacks him. Yes. So he gets bit by the shark. So what does he do? He bites the shark back. He's Dracula. Now they have some kind of fucking bond, right? Now it cuts to like 150 years later. And there's these two guys walking into town. Uh, one guy, the best way to describe him, and it's no disrespect to Stephen Keeler. He has a Stephen Keeler hat on that 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 hat he wears all the time, like the, the that like that. And he's at, at but. These guys, these guys look like the, the director picked them up at the snack bar at a horror convention. And you want to be in a movie. And they're on their way to, they're going to, but the town they're in is called, what is it? The, the fucking, oh God, Arkham, right? Oh. oh, let's call it Arkham. That's original. So they're there. Now they're, they're there. Meanwhile, they go in to the hotel and there they meet Renfield. Now Renfield, let's picture this. Ch Children of the Corn. Malachi, the main kid, right? Make believe if you're in a film, classic film, picture it being played by Peter Lorre with a bad accent. That's who this guy looks like. And he meets them, they go, they get, they're supposed to work with, I think it's a Mr. Constantine. Well, Mr. Constantine is actually Dracula, <laughs> right? He's Dracula, but he's 200, 150 years later, but he still walks around in like this a spirit Halloween costume thing. Like he's going to be for the first sitting on the Titanic for fucking dinner. Was he still a ginger? <laughs> yes. Oh, ginger. But he's he's there. And this then that guy, he's played by a guy named, oh my God, his name is Jeff Kirkendale. He's been in seven of these films. And he talks like Dracula. And he, you know, I said the Dracula guy, Mr. Costing, he talks like Dracula, but he's kind of like Elmer Fudd with maybe some speech therapy, but not fully. And he's and on top of that, he's inflecting a Bela Lugosi accent. And you're watching this. Now, what he does, he has an arrangement with the fucking shark. Of course. And they bring women 
and the shark comes up on the land. Now, the shark changes every time you see him. First time, he's a rubber shark. Next time, he looks like a, a rat head with wings. The next time, he looks like a dragon from like a really bad cast uh, Dungeons and Dragons figure from the 80s. I mean, just, just look horrifying. He changes all the time, except the close-up is some big rubber, like, shark that they bang into this guy's you know side and they put fake blood and this thing so he brings women down they sacrifice him he's a he's a he's a, he's with two guys that look like the templar knights from the, the tombs of the blind dead films and unless they got i really want to see this movie unless, unless they got yeah, I was too close. Say again i think dan selling me down this one <laughs> let's see unless they got too close to the fire pit in the backyard they're all burned so he sees them and now there's Mina in town, too. Uh, she's an actress who's been in at least 12 movies in this wild eye entertainment universe, uh, which is down there in the lower depths, down the rabbit hole. And so, meanwhile, the one guy is killed. The one friend is killed because they're looking out. They're watching Dracula lead these women to the water. And when they're looking out of their window, you can see the sun streaming in, but it's nighttime outside that's how bad this is it, they go so the one guy goes and investigates it he gets killed by a vampire now the friend who's still alive hooks up with mina and has nothing just named mina and she's like a slave to dracula they don't go any further than that you know other than she's probably sleeping with the director or somebody because she's in seven movies and turns around and they they approach dracula okay they have some of the greatest lines. They explain about the friggin' what do you call it? What's it called? The um about originally they they not only watch the film, it's slow, but they replay the first 10 minutes when Dracula's being changed by the shark. So to pad the film and explains what happened when I went into water, you know, and this and that. And so when they're explaining this, the the one guy who's still alive with Mina sits there and goes, Yes, it was a makeshift mob of uneducated farmers. What the fuck did you come up with that line? You know, then later they go, we are not safe in this wide open darkness. And then Dracula refers to his Sharkula buddy, right? He says, Sharkula, the devil fish of the waters, like with the V, like he's selling pickles on the Lower East Side. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just I'm going like, I'm going like, what the fuck? So, Anyhow, what happens? They run away from Dracula. He, they're going to sacrifice Mina. He rescues her. They run. They go into a basement, which is to hide. Well, it's Dracula's lair. But it's not like it's in Cardiff Castle or Cardiff you know, Abbey. Car 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 Carfax Car Car Abbey. No, it looks like my basement here. There's like fucking water pipes and maybe there's, a, you know, this. And then there's like a, there's a, there's a, like one of those bad Western movie caskets in the middle of the floor. With a couple of like, if you're, I'm going to throw an aquatic party. So they throw like some netting on it, like it's in the sea and some cobwebs. And that's Dracula's lair. But they don't see some woman that's chained to the wall. Dracula comes down. They get into a big fight. The shark is pissed off at Dracula because he fucked up his last sacrifice. So now he's Dracula is no longer Dracula. He's, I don't know what he is. <laughs> but it's bizarre. It makes no sense. Uh, yet I could not look away from this thing. I just, I just kept watching, and I said, the only thing that saved me, it took me three days to watch it. I'd watch it for the first X amount of minutes until the two B commercials came on. It's the first, I hate commercials. I look forward to commercials just to give me a breather. And what but year was this film made in? 2022. Oh, wow. Now, so this is recent. Okay. Yeah, just give, just give me, just, real quick, this Mark Poloni has made the following shark films. You probably ran through this. Sharkula. No, we'll go right here. Jurassic Shark 3. That's oh, coming out. That came out this year. Cocaine oh, Shark. Hey. Hey. Of course. Doll Shark. Sharkula. Noah's Shark. Jurassic oh. Shark 2. Aquapocalypse. Actually, Jurassic Park 3 is Seavenge. Uh, Virus Shark. Shark Encounters of the Third Kind. <laughs> Amityville Island. Land Shark. And Sharkenstein, Sharkenstein, which was almost going to be the one to talk talk about tonight. That's even equally as bad. And I realize historically that Nazis in 1942, aside from making the Volkswagen, possibly made Adidas because they're wearing them in, in their costumes. 
<laughs> oh, now this stuff is so bad, but I'm so intrigued. But this, <laughs> go we have enough to do this next July. July. Oh, we could we could do a bad we could do a Shark Week every week and never. You no, know, to to ball. pull the um curtain back a bit. We in the group chat that we had um. I pulled up a whole bunch of these ridiculous posters and said, look at these, ha, ha, ha. This guy seems to have directed all of those ones that I posted the other day in the group chat. Yeah, he's directed all a lot. Of Jesus, good Christ almighty. And like, they all had these bizarre posters. When so I was, was searching for shark movies, that name, Mark, Mark Polonia, I, yeah. his, his name was on like yeah. was on so many ones, and I and I saw the same thing. I mean, it was like, Wow, that's this guy's made a career out of making. He's music. a what do you call? It? But he he's a professor. He's he's uh he teaches uh video and audio, which makes no sense because his horror films are horrible. Video and audio, you know, at college, video to have, you know video production. So he probably gets a lot of students to come in and help him, and they make these films, you know, that are just god awful. But they're like kind of mesmerized. But man, I went down the rabbit hole with this one. I, I, I had to, I had to sit, I had to call it, throw on a National Geographic series just to feel like normal, like clean. And then on top of that, I had to throw on like an Al Adamson movie or Ed Wood to just get a grip on real cinema. Is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's, the, but there's something <laughs> intriguing about it. It's a whole subculture. Look under Wild Eye Entertainment or any of these guys, IMDB, him, Donald Farmer, the names of the movies they make are intriguing just in general you know I, it's a wild so anyhow dan do you think that if go back to toshiro mifune that if akira kurosawa directed that film maybe a little bit better i i think that was him that was him breaking out on his own you know he was always under his under his shadow yeah. uh, i think yujimbo and, and Shin sanjuro that's when he became toshiro mifune yeah, you know, he's not a he was not a he was not a Kurosawa actor at that point. Didn't yeah. but, but that's what I said. Apart from going to things like this to decide what Mark Maloney a film or Joe, you know, going to fucking choose. God. What More happened? importantly, did Shark did Sharkula have any nudity in it? Um, no, but I will say that Nina, the actress, uh, she is who passes the Rosenberg test. <laughs> well, she was she was she was well. You've lost a subscriber she, tonight. She was, but she was dressed uh, like, uh, yeah. like like a, 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 a Sunday school teacher. But yeah, she was well endowed, and uh, she's been in at least ten of these films. So, but I don't think he does nudity. I think he just you know whatever. But I know no well, nudity. I hate to say that mm -hmm. I'm going to break the nudity streak, but I'm not. Um, my film, God, after hearing all these, I think mine was a cinematic classic compared to some of these. Uh, and mine wasn't good either. Uh, I saw a film from 2011 called Swamp Shark, originally aired on the Sci Fi Channel. Okay, it was one of their original pictures that debuted uh, June 25th, 2011. So this one was directed by Griff First. Who Griff First is? I have no idea. Uh, it stars the very lovely Christy Swanson. Ooh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I'm That's right. Yeah. She also did another shark film right around this same time that ironically has a very, very similar plot, but we won't talk about that one. Uh, D.B. Sweeney is in this film. Mm -hmm. The great Robert Davi is in this film. Oh. Uh, I'm strangely enough, and I, I had to, because I, I watched this actually twice because I kept falling asleep there and I had to keep rewinding and watching it again. Uh, at one point, there's like, because this film has like the most bumbling of all sheriff's departments you'll ever see and robert dobby is the head of the department but he's like dirty as anything right he's like the bad guy in this film but he's got all these deputies that are just complete idiots in this film one of them i'm like watching like the scene that he's in and i'm like man that really looks like wade boggs the great for uh all-star third baseman you know from you know major league baseball whatever and i'm like ah, i can't be him and then i went and read the credits i'm like that was wade boggs probably the only movie he ever did he's in this movie uh also in this film is i've never seen her since but sophie sinise gary sinise's daughter oh hmm. Yeah. Um, and a bunch of other people that, you know, you may have seen here and there, but, you know, a bunch of nobodies. Anyway, the whole story, this takes place down in the bayou in Florida uh, in this town, which they uh, they may have named it. They may have not. Who really cares? It's just some shitty little town right on the right on the bayou. And it, it centers on this place called the Gator Shed, which is owned by Christy Swanson, her character and her brother, her older brother and her younger sister. Uh, they own, it's kind of like a restaurant, bar type of a place, you know, you go there and it's, you know, they have they bands play there, they, you know, coffee house, serve food and, you know, whatnot. 
And uh, but the movie starts where you see this big like tanker being driven down by the bayou, right? And uh, they stop the tanker and uh, these group of like, I guess they're like animal smugglers, right? So they go and they are meeting up with Robert Davi's character, who's the, the sheriff, and they're trying to broker a deal. So obviously whatever is in the tanker, spoiler alert, it's a shark, right? Um, you don't find out like till like more than halfway through the film actually what the shark is and why they were there. But anyway, so the the smugglers are doing a deal with the sheriff to kind of hold this thing for a while so they can get it down across the border or whatever. So they agree to do that, right? But as they're going to make the the kind of the switch, the tanker falls over off the road, crashes down the hill lands in the bayou and then all of a sudden something breaks out of the steel tanker right gee i wonder what that is then of course you see a fin swimming away now most sharks live in salt water right the bayou is fresh water okay whatever right it's the first thing i thought of so then they kind of get away from that they go back to the gator shed Everybody's in town is preparing for what's it called Gator Fest. So of course it's down in Florida. So they do this big festival where they have food and drink and they do things with the gators and the gator fighting and all that kind of stuff. Blah blah blah. And uh, we all now we realize that Christy Swanson's character, another guy who works at the at uh, the Gator Shed, is kind of her boyfriend and he's kind of a dick. So he's like he's with her, but he's hitting on every woman known to man that comes into the place. Right. So there's some. There's some stuff going on there. Then they introduce D.B. Sweeney's character. You're not really sure who he is. He's there getting coffee. He kind of flirts with her. Then him and the boyfriend constantly get into these fights all throughout the movie. You're like, all right, dude, what, what's this all about? Who knows? Anyway, next we go back to the shark, who then is seen swimming around the bayou in and around town. All of a sudden, everybody starts to notice that. Where are all the gators? We haven't seen the gators much, right? Well, apparently, the shark is eating the gators, right? And now all of a sudden, the shark has like bumpy green skin, kind of looks like gator skin. Why? Who knows? Midway through the film, we find out because there's a uh, there's an Asian guy who also works at the restaurant who actually has the hots for the younger sister. He's very smart. He's really good with Internet searches. So he finds out that uh, after they see the shark, that he says that there was a discovery of some kind of prehistoric shark that they found when they cracked into some sort of a hole in the bottom of the ocean. And that apparently this creature was captured. Well, that's this particular shark, right? But where it all hits the fan is all of a sudden the shark starts killing people. First, he kills this like homeless guy who the first four people who get killed in this film are all African-American characters. So every time they introduce one in the film, they get killed pretty quickly after. So this one homeless drunk guy, he gets killed on the on the pier. The shark jumps out, kills him. Uh, then uh, this cop, who's really kind of like another one of the bumbling sheriff guys, and he walks around with binoculars spying on young couples making out all over the place it's really ridiculous and then this the best scene in the film is where he's sitting there doing that on the pier and the shark comes out of the water leaps up bites his head off and he's just sitting there with no head blood squirting all over the place lands back in the water so that was probably the best kill in the film but uh Christy Swanson finally gets wind that there's a shark in the water. So this one scene, she goes out. She's kind of a tough girl, right? She's got her gun. She starts shooting at the shark in the water. Does Of course, her aim is terrible. She doesn't kill the shark. Then she gets everybody together and says, we've got to go out and kill the shark, right? Meanwhile, now the sheriff gets wind that she saw a shark. He's trying to cover up his fuck up here, right? So he's like, oh, there's no shark. So he, you know says you can't do anything you can't go after the shark you can't do anything with the guns we'll take care of it they of course know that he's kind of a dirty cop uh he winds up putting the older brother in jail they somehow sneak off they go on one of those what do you call those contra those both things with the big propeller things in the back that they take along the bayou whatever 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're going out there and they got their guns and they're going out there hunting the shark. And again, the shark was very smart, kind of like in Jaws. He's like leading them down places. So this leads to all these little escapades of them trying to kill the shark. They wind up not killing the shark. And then the uh, there's a hilarious scene with this interracial couple that wind up sneaking a boat out into the bayou so they can go and have sex on the boat. And that doesn't end well. The boat capsizes and the shark eats both of them under the boat, right? Whatever. Um, and then the young, the, the sister winds up hanging out with some friends of hers on this other larger boat. And that gets stuck, of course, like Creature of the Black Lagoon goes down this little uh, section of the bayou and the propellers, because of course the shark leads them down there. The propellers get caught on all sorts of vegetation, can't get out. And one by one, the shark starts killing them as they fall into the water. He bumps the boat, the whole nine yards. Uh, eventually the older sister and the rest of the crew, oh, and the, the dickhead boyfriend, he winds up getting killed, obviously. Um, wind up finding the sister, rescues whoever's left on the big boat. Then there's the big, the of course, like in Jaws, right? The sheriff is like, well, we have to have Gator Fest, even though everybody's saying there's a shark in the water. This is our big event of the summer. We can't not have this, right? Because this is what brings all money to the town, right? We're going to have Gator Fest. And of course, the big climax happens uh, right where Gator Fest is, shark comes out of the water I mean, i'm just going to give the whole plot away the whole ending away because it's Nobody that's probably the best part of the movie I see it. But they have this whole big thing with the shark you know they shoot yeah, it trying to kill it. it they somehow wound up uh and of course like in jaws they try the whole let's get a propane tank and shove it down into the shark's mouth and shoot it that doesn't work because now apparently they figure out that whatever the shark is he's got really tough skin and he's almost impossible to kill how they know this don't know but anyway yeah. the tank thing doesn't work but what does work is they somehow get something some kind of really uh strong line into him all right and they attach it to the propeller of the the boat and as it wraps around the shark gets pulled into the propeller chops him up in a million pieces that's the end of the film all right. The really strong skin until it doesn't have yes, really strong skin. Exactly. So he's got strong skin for everything else until the color just easily just you know turns him into mincemeat. Yours yours had the strongest plot line. I think so. Not that it was strong. Oh, it yeah, from it's like, real, it's like a real movie. Yeah, yeah. like real. Like, why couldn't like, it rip off Jaws 3 and have a guy inside the know. mouth it's, and, they, and then little... you gotta pull the pin of the grenade out to blow him up? No, like I, I was, when, they, they, they've had sharks in every conceivable things toll booth sharks sharks in the corn and i'm watching these things i finally go how shark and i go oh that's too far-fetched I'm, I'm not gonna watch that they can't be a shark in the house god i you know that the fact with donald farmer he's older than me i think i'm once the writer strike is over i think i'm gonna launch production on shark <laughs> in the hood over here in newburgh so i'll make my own movie anybody want to be in it <laughs> sure. But the shark for the Greg, as long as there's nudity, as long as there's catering. Don't worry, we'll have plenty. I do. Come on, we have to live with nudity. Unfortunately, it's all of us. Here's the thing about this movie, though. They tease nudity at least three times during the film. Like this, remember I told you about the scene with the uh, the interracial couple out on the boat. At one point, he they're sitting on the boat, and she's like, "Oh, I'm so excited! I'm so excited!" And she undoes her bikini top, and then they show you from the camera point of view from behind him. But of course, he's covering her, so all you see is her head. And then when she puts it back on, then they show her putting it back on, right? So there's oh, that. sci-fi channel. Yeah, oh. sci-fi. But I tell you, Christy Swanson does a pretty good job in the film. Um, and, you know, she's still, this was film was over 10 years ago, but she's still really, really cute. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not good. But, uh, and it, like I said, it's, it's a total ripoff of Jaws and the Creature from the Black Lagoon and a couple other things. And, you know, the shark is a mix of CGI and there's a couple of like um, animatronic shots but for the most part he doesn't look great there's not a lot of blood in it. there's a, there's a couple of good kills but uh, the the one kill is the best where he bites off the head of the uh, of the cop but um but yeah but most of the people in the in the film are idiots and robert dobby gets his come up it's at the end of course he's good he's just he's a total slime bag like he always is he plays a good part but uh and db sweeney's pretty good in this film but yeah uh but i had to watch it like twice because i kept falling asleep during it and then i would like go and rewind and try and watch it again fall asleep and the next day i'm like all right let me rewatch it again so uh i feel like i know it pretty well but i don't think i'll ever need to watch it again but if you like christy swanson and you want to see 
uh, if, if the whole premise sounds kind of fun to see this prehistoric shark that I guess starts eating gators and starts to develop like gator skin it's, it's, it's totally ridiculous but yeah whatever i mean the, the premise of the whole film is ridiculous because the shark would not be able to live in the fresh water like that but whatever well jaws 4 explains that pete so um in, in the load of shark films jaws the revenge explains that fresh water and salt water don't apply if the shark wants revenge badly enough Oh yeah. right! Oh, all right. That explains all right. it. All right, we have an explanation now. I never thought of that. The revenge factor that holds up for me. I'm revenge, I'm no revenge, 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 revenge saline factor. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But this shark doesn't. You know, this shark in this film just seems to. There's there's no driving factor to what he does. Like, why is he killing you know, people here? Or, you know, should he want revenge because they tried they dragged him out of wherever he was? And uh, you know, he's just. It's not doing it. He's not. He's just. You know, doing whatever. Shark's kind of shark, man. Yeah. Something to put me in a tank or I'd be out for revenge, Pete. I'm, I've got to be honest, I'm on the shark side, yeah. Yeah. He's eating all that gator. It tastes like chicken. So yeah, I guess. Are we good. supposed to decide who had the worst one? Yeah, are we going to, like, vote? Yes, We're okay, all, so... Uh, should, we, should we write it down and then hold it up? <laughs> Let's do that. All right, so... I, I had to get a piece of paper in the back of it. I can have the worst one. I had four pairs of pets. What was the worst? I hate them. Yeah, okay. Say, this is easy. Put the name of the movie or the person who showed it, or either or. Okay. Yeah, I got mine. Is everyone gonna vote for themselves? Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say. Well, I, I don't know. I, that's the movie you had to sit through. <laughs> oh, ab abstention, please, Your Honor. All right, Craig. What do you uh? Who are you voting for? I went with Davies' Night of the Sharks, and his his movie had plural, uh, and I don't. He said there was not barely one shark in the movie, mm. so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Davies. His his sounded pretty terrible. Okay. In technicality, Ooh. they do eat a couple of other sharks later in the film, uh, but. There are no threats, so I think. Sure. I think we'll, yeah, Davey, what would you choose? Uh, because I've seen it, I have to go with Shark Exorcist, which is not, as Jamie said, it's not actually a film. It's it's just somebody with a camera Fucking giving around. a giving a bunch of community college people ten bucks to. Hey, would you do this for me? Would you roll around in the floor and pretend you're possessed? Why? Yeah, uh, ten bucks. Shut up and do it. Um, so it's not a film. It's not a film at all. It's an embarrassment to. To cameras, so yeah, fuck that movie. Chris, uh, I went with Davy. Um, everybody's sounded somewhat interesting, except Davy's. Uh, and I know I have it on VHS, and I have the U.S. theatrical one sheet somewhere. I know I have it in my collection, uh, <laughs> but I, I don't. I think I've seen it, but I re do not remember it at all. Remember this, folks. This is the only film with pets, and Chris says it's the worst one. <laughs> what does that tell you? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Jamie, I I gotta go with Davy and say me because that is one of the worst movies I've ever seen, and I not calling it a movie. I refuse yeah. to call it a movie, and I've never said that sentence before about a movie. Yeah, Dan, I, I went with Chris's with Shark and Soul. Main reason being is that you know it just uh, it seemed to be very incoherent, and the fact that uh, Jim Wynarski fucked up his poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I just didn't go here and it's like crazy. Trying to be cute, you know, yeah. and uh, yeah, I'm here. What, what the hell? Yeah. Tracy's yeah. not here. Okay, what the but an end joke between them, so they'll ruin your fucking post. To fuck off. Right. So this uh, is funny because uh, most of these sound really awful, but uh, I, the, I think the one that I thought had some sort of uh, potential to be somewhat interesting sounds like it's like completely shitty and i went with shark exorcist because quite frankly i didn't from what from the way jamie described it i don't hear it doesn't sound like this having anything to do with the exorcist and it has basically nothing to do with sharks so that gets my vote so but they all they all sound really bad so but at I, least there I, are a couple that I'm, I'm kind of intrigued to see in a weird way i guess shark, shark is intriguing on a train wreck level it's just it's just you're sitting there going i can't believe this is happening i can't believe this is happening 
Just be, just because it's got Dracula and Renfield, that's the one I think I would actually watch out of this whole. Yeah, one. yeah. No, no, and, and the Renfield guy plays he, the, the, this guy Mark Polonia or Polonia. He has like stock players, and like I said, the guy that plays you know Dracula's in like seven films. He is also in and what's that Amityville and Outer Space. And when you put the poster up, maybe that. I mean, uh, and yeah. And I was so intrigued with this stuff because it's, it's a whole sub level of filmmaking, you know. And yet, I think back to the 80s when Attack of the Killer Tomatoes came out and they just did nothing but shit on it. How bad it was. How bad. There are movies out here now. It's like this, we can thank streaming for this because these yeah. things, you know, this, this is where they go. They go to Tubi to die. They go, but I sat and watched them. You know, look for well, the- you know the other thing is anybody today can make a fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. That, just like when it, it when it comes to the music business, you know the market's been flooded by shitty bands. Why? Because anybody can make a fucking record now and put it out. Oversaturation. So, you know? We'll all remember the 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 surplus of movies in the nineties when um, video cameras became easily affordable, where huh? we had awful like feeders and things. These awful um, feeders awful- was done by Mark Polonia. <laughs> Was that the poor? Yeah, and that was the film that got him and his brother. It's a horrible film, but that's the film that got him like noticed. That was an alien two sequels. Which turned into Christmas films. Um, That that was one of the first big ones, and they've got a lot to answer for those early straight to video movies. You can do it too. No, you can't. No, you. I, I had forgotten to mention that in my movie in Jersey Shore Shark Attack, there is a scene where someone they find someone who had who had died as a result of the shark, and they couldn't decide they couldn't figure out what the guy's name was. They kept saying, oh, "It's it's Vinny Stugatz. No, it's Vinny Knuckles. No, it's uh, it's a uh, no, that's v- Vinny Bag of Donuts." And and then they actually go through all these things, and then they go, "He wasn't attacked by a shark. He drowned it." And it actually has that in the closed captions. It says he drowned it, and they say it like like uh, three times. He drowned it. Mm. But that's at least kind of witty in some weird way. No, pretty no. sure sense. That is the one of these that I would never watch. Just just the event. And none of the Jersey Shore people die in it either, because oh, it's like bad. you're you're, oh, you're assuming that you're because it, you're either going to watch it because it's like, well, I really like you know these it's people, but or or you'll hate watch it and say, God, I hope they all get eaten like in a uh, like in a slasher movie, and none <laughs> well, of that's them dumb know. because that's the only reason people saw that House of Wax remake was because everybody wanted to see Paris Hilton get killed, right. You know, you should advertise that. Oh, you hate these cunts? Well, why don't we just kill them off? And, and then advertise that. We will kill them in the most disgustingly horrible ways ever. Well, what, what was the one with uh, Tiffany and... Uh, Debbie uh, Gibson. Tiffany and, and Debbie Gibson. Gibson. They, they both oh, got that, eaten by like a monster. A, that's a crocodile movie. That's like a killer croc. Or, it's, a, it's a crocodile movie. Yeah, they both get eaten at the end, right? I, I kind Speaking of which, it. there's a lot of that's alligator a, slash crocodile films movie. out there. Maybe not as much as sharks, but... No, 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 no. Uh, Debbie Gibson and Tiffany, I think, are fighting in that movie, and one yes. uh, one of them one of them says, uh, "I think we're alone now," and uh, oh, and boy. the other and the other one says, uh, yeah, uh, "Only in your dreams," you know, oh, or, or something like that. Well, yeah, you know, while they're fighting, yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed, I enjoyed Shark Nation when they killed uh, Matt Lauer and Al Roker, you know, on the, the newsstand. That's or whatever the news station. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and one of the Sharknado movies has you know uh, Robert Hayes doing uh, his airplane from airplane uh, in it. He's the airplane pilot. So I mean, there are some funny moments in in those movies, as bad as they are. Oh yeah. Well, look, I think we all know the real lesson of this episode. Yeah, watch fucking don't, Jaws and none of the rest. No, <laughs> don't be a dick in the comments. That's the lesson of this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you will be Rosenberg shouted out like <laughs> like a certain commenter has been by Chris tonight. <laughs> oh man. So, so for those watching, uh, let us know if you had fun with this, and maybe we will uh, preface Shark Week next year and do this once again. God help us. Um, there'll be another hundred out there. To choose from. Exactly. There's so many more to choose from, right? So They'll we... make another 20 in the next yeah. year to choose from. I was going to say, there'll be a whole batch of new ones. Yeah. Sasquatch, that, uh, Sasquatch uh, movies are right behind them, though. Sasquatch. I want, oh, least, I want to watch that shark octopus versus the whale wolf, just because I like saying whale wolf. Yeah. <laughs> whale wolf. Werewolf? 
Well, there we <laughs> oh my God. So if, if anybody has seen any of these films, let us know what you think of them down in the comments below. And hey, if we have prompted you to want to go out and check out any of these, and you do watch them, come back and let us know what you think and then whatever other crazy, terrible shark films you've seen of late, put them down. Many of them on Tubi. Yes. You know? yeah, oh, yeah, there, you can see a lot of them. There are no bargains to buy them on DVD. They're not cheap out there for yeah. some reason or another. So Tubi, you can get most of them there if you can live through the commercials. And guess what? You'll need the break. Yeah. One penny plus postage. <laughs> <laughs> One page. One page. Uh, thanks for watching everybody visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on youtube all together all oh, the damn time tune in two weeks from today for another episode of the monsters den till then for jamie laszlo dan brown davy gallagher chris allo and craig kaminsky happy shark week happy shark week everybody next right. week We'll see you next time here at the Monsters Den. I'm Pete Bardo. Bye-bye.